Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very enlightening problem for you all today. Uh, this one was posted on the ARIB problem solving forum last year uh, by the user RE004. And I don't know where it originally came from, uh, but it's a very nice problem. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over my solution. So we have a triangle ABC and the in circle touches B, C, C, A, and A, B at points D, E, and F. And then X is a random point on the segment A, B uh, that lies inside the in circle. And B, X meets the in circle at Q, and C, X meets the in circle at R. And we want to prove that E, F, Q, R, and B, C are concurrent. So I haven't drawn those three lines, but that's what we're trying to prove here. So my solution used a lot of the things that I mentioned in many of the more recent videos on my channel. So a combination of poles and polars and projective geometry. Uh, so if you'd seen those, it probably made this problem a little bit easier. And if you hadn't, it would probably be a little more difficult. All right, so we wanna show that those three uh, lines are concurrent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the intersection of EF with BC, and I'm gonna to wanna to show that QR passes through that. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna note something. So um, the segments AD, BE, and CF, they, they're concurrent at the jergon point of the triangle. Uh, so I've mentioned this on my channel before, so I'm gonna write it out. So AD, BE, and CF, so those are the three Chebians that connect each vertex to the opposite tangency point. Uh, they're concurrent. Uh, so I'm not gonna draw them in here, but if I did, they would meet at a single point. And that's easy to prove by Chebis theorem, uh, since the tangents from each of the ver vertex uh, to the end circle are the same. So AF is equal to AE, BF is equal to BD, and CE is equal to CD. And then if you apply Chebis, uh, which I did in video 29, uh, you'll see easily that those concur at a point. Um, and I also did something very similar in video 88. So I'd seen this idea before. Okay. So why is that useful? Um, well, first I'm gonna extend EF to meet BC at a point. Uh, I'm gonna call that G. And to solve the problem, basically, we wanna show that QR passes through point G. But it turns out that uh, these four points, uh, B, C, D, and G, are in harmonic conjugation. Uh, so I mentioned that uh, in both uh, video 29, I believe, and video 88. Um, so this is kind of a well-known idea that B, C, D, and G are in harmonic conjugation. And so uh, the reason why that is is because, it, is because these three are concurrent. Um, so I mentioned that in video 55 on my channel um, that's the second video on projective geometry. But if A, D, B, E, and C, F are concurrent, then these have to uh, be in harmonic conjugation, B, C, D, and G. And so the cross ratio is equal to one. All right, so where do we go from here? Uh, so now I'm gonna note a few things about poles and polars. Uh, so G lies on E, F. And EF, that's the line uh, connecting the points of tangency from A to the end circle. And so EF is the polar of A, okay? So since, okay, this is what I just said, AE and AF are both tangent to the end circle. So EF is the polar of A. I proved this in video 75. It's one of the basic facts about poles and polars. Okay, so if that's true, that means G lies on the polar of A, because G is on this line EF. And if that's true, then by Lahiri's theorem, A lies on the polar of G. Okay, so we know that A lies on the polar of G. Um, but not only that, it's easy to see that D also has to lie on the polar of G, uh, because GD is tangent to the end circle. Okay, so the the polar of G, we know that A lies on it, but the polar of G is also the, the line connecting the two points of tangency from G to the end circle. And so since D is one of those points of tangency, uh, D has to lie on the polar of G. So if A lies on the polar of G, 
and D lies on the polar of G, then the line AD is the polar of G. All right. So how do I take advantage of the fact that AD is the polar of G? Uh, so I'm going to show you um, in just a second. Um, first, I'm going to hide this line segment CX. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the line through GQ, and I'm going to let it intersect a circle uh, at another point, uh, which I'm going to call R prime. Uh, and I'm going to let it intersect AD uh, at point H. So why am I doing this? So another way of solving the problem would be to show that X, R prime, and C are collinear. Uh, that would be another way of thinking about it, which is what I'm going to do. And the reason why I'm thinking about it like this is because we know that AD is the polar of G. So by a property of polars, which I proved in video number 76, so that was my second video on poles and polars, uh, since H lies on the polar of G, then the cross ratio Q R prime H G has to equal one. Okay, so H lies on the polar of G because H is on the segment AD. And so uh, that means that this cross ratio Q R prime H G is equal to one. So check out my video 76 for this proof, but it's a super handy fact about uh, poles and polars. Um, so definitely worth remembering. And I would say this might be the key to solving this problem. Okay, so we know this cross ratio Q R prime H G is equal to one um, because uh, if you draw the line through point G, uh, it intersects the polar at point H and the circle at those two points. Um, and so that's why this fact is true. And then we can take these four points and we can project them through point X onto the line BC. Okay, and that gets us uh, very close to solving the problem because if we do that um, if we project these four points through x uh, onto bc then q goes to point b uh, r prime uh, we don't know where that goes yet uh, so i'm just going to label it x r prime intersect bc because that's where that's what the point would be and then h goes to point d and g stays at point g so we have this cross ratio is equal to the original, which is equal to one. Okay. But we know that the four points B, C, D, and G uh, are in harmonic conjugation from uh, up here. So their cross ratio is equal to one. And so since three of the four points in these two cross ratios are equal to one, uh, this second point has to equal point C. So so X R prime has to meet the line B C at C. And that's just the same as saying that X R prime and C are collinear. Okay. So X R prime and C are collinear because that's the only way this intersection can be the point C. And if that's true, that essentially solves the problem because that means that R and R prime are the same point. Uh, so I worked a little back backwards here in the problem. Um, but if X, R prime and C are collinear, then R has to equal R prime because we define R to be the intersection of CX with the in-circle. And if that's the case, then it's clear that the problem is true because that means that EF, QR, and BC all concur at point G. So this problem really used a lot of key facts that I mentioned uh, previously in my videos. And if you'd seen those, I feel like it, it made this problem substantially easier. Um, but I'm still kind of curious if there's a solution that doesn't use uh, stuff about poles and polars or harmonic uh, conjugation. Um, so if you have a solution like that, uh, feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.